When we speak about broadening, that is expanding wider service delivery and deepening, that is promoting competency and good risk management, we can look to underlying theory to help us conceive and coordinate our diverse professional roles. The unity of purpose, the work assemblies, the language, the attitudes, the specialization coordination all flow from cooperative dispute resolution theory. Using cooperative dispute resolution theory helps us perform our different roles and manage expectations for the clients and the other CDR professionals as we work more effectively with each other and the general public, mindful of the separate elements of professional responsibilities, specifically framed as the solicitor-client relationship in legal services and the principle of self-determination in mediation, the prime directives, guiding hybrid practice. The common thread is alignment and indeed allegiance to the client-centered approach. The focus here is to respect the inherent capacity of the clients as decision makers, as they respond to their own self-declared or perceived interests, their own goals, desires, values, their own innate response to the variety of rights and obligations arising from their marital or family relationships. CDR is based upon a lateral as opposed to a hierarchical structure. This is a horizontal framework engaging law as a resource, not a vertical grid with law or indeed legal agencies in command. In negotiation theory, the law model constitutes standardization. That is relevant legal information from case law, statutory stipulations, for example, child support tables, SSAG computations and NFP formula with local practice or court protocols leading towards informed consent. Understanding hybrid practice begins with identifying client needs and processing issue resolution. CDR practice or hybrid practice informs multidisciplinary work flows based upon those presenting client needs from assessment towards resolution and agreement. The key players are mediators and lawyers in their differentiated roles, coordinating the mediator's resolution and the lawyer's agreement. We CDR professionals combine the foundation of client assessment with our own risk management strategies as we coordinate and indeed provide effective teamwork to the general public. So primarily, this theory assists in demarcating good boundaries, thus clarifying the professional interrelationships and laying the basis for lateral leadership. Lateral leadership is about mutual respect between lawyers and mediators in particular as we connect as valued team players. Secondly, and by extension, we're better managing trust issues. And that's not just mistrust of the parties, but also between mediators and lawyers. Currently, at best, skeptical coexistence, at worst, unseemly dysfunction. Mistrust can be understood as conflict. Accordingly, conflict reduction strategies therefore aim at emplacing structure and improving the lines of communication, which to us means process design with strategic awareness. CDR structures involve clarity in first organizing the bearings of the client-centered approach that becomes the unifying message to and about the client. Thirdly, we help to organize our specialized professional roles based on a better understanding and management of the term issue resolution. This is our functional currency or language informing the component workups across the family law compartments and interim or permanent resolutions on parenting, child support, spousal support, property, and arrangements surrounding the matrimonial home and relocations. Here, we're ever conscious of necessary pathways to resolution and agreement in terms of supporting individual and joint decision-making by the parties and the other CDR professionals. As such, this dynamic promotes hybrid practice, a workflow which may span specialized professional processes from less intrusive to more third-party default decision-making. So on the graph, that's why we have the clients at the center of this graph, to give voice and provide reliable, substantive and procedural information in the context of our specialized professional skills, supporting their inherent right to decide their own private destinies. 
then these are the CDR layers of appropriate dispute resolution, where we see a number of different processes, yet at all times informed by the central theme of client interest. The coordinates are supplied by the spectrum of less to more formal structure and the ever increasing prospect or default to third party decision making. So as we move through the professional modalities from the basic direct paradigm of the client's discussion themselves, that's the Tim Hortons conversation, through simple mediation and then enhanced mediation, including circle facilitation with the team approach to a more integrated legal services activity with cooperative lawyers, collaborative practice, and court-connected issue resolution, which we now call Judicial Dispute Resolution, JDR. These are the variations in mixed mode ADR, hybrid practice being designed as the designed assembly of specialized professional roles, different variations upon a central theme unified by the client-centered approach. And as you may imagine, there's every number of interrelationships predicated on different team members varied mediation and legal counsel, ILA lawyers, collaborative practice, all structured logistically in terms of presenting issue resolution. In addition to the guiding concept of issue resolution, another crucial CDR ingredient is assessment. First general proposition, assessment is ongoing. Your focus on assessing the client begins at the initial consultation phase but continues throughout the process. Instructions and circumstances may change and there needs to be a constant vigil on capacity and other relevant features, which could include domestic violence or diminished capacity. There should be exceptional professional diligence, including clinical notes in the event of change instructions. Assessment also extends to clarity in your precise role, particularly as it may extend to other family professionals. Strategic process details and precision in language are critical. Is there a mediation process continuing as you speak? How exactly is the mediation process now or in the future going to be interfaced with your mandate? But then question or identify the exact parameters of that foreseeable intervention. Is it one, ingrained mediation, that is integrated throughout the entire process akin to legal representation in court-connected civil litigation, or two, adjunct, the classic review of resolution particulars in ILA with or without drafting at source, or three, enhanced mediation, for example, using collaborative practitioners or mediation expert support technicians, financial planners, child specialists, pension evaluators, et cetera. So that brings us to the importance of communication and team building. Take a clo close look at your referral dynamics. Once again, clear boundaries informed by the sanctity of professional standards, being the independence of legal counsel and the impartiality and neutrality of mediators. Every case is a statement and exhibition of your demonstrated professionalism. Accordingly, your intake strategies, both with the client and the other professionals, are the subject of focused conversations and ideally clinical notes and records. And to expand to a more general comment, CDR professionals are encouraged to maintain good and continual procedural check-ins, culminating in the final debrief opportunity. Specifically, you and the team are crafting an action plan which will ensure fairness and reliability to the mediation participants and the professional group. This will inevitably involve your professional interests and recommendations on process design. If you're keeping your CDR client bearings in clear focus, you'll probably get a good sense of a common approach, classically starting with unqualified cooperation from your client and the other CDR professionals in providing reliable and verifiable financial disclosure. The opportunity for lateral leadership in CDR gives any and all team professionals a bully pulpit in addressing settlement as a self-fulfilling prophecy. What do we need to talk about and what information is required for a good decision making? What strengths and skill sets are you planning on bringing to the table? ABC, always be constructive. 
You have a constituency in this case, so give voice to what needs to be addressed from your mandate, which will move the group through resolution to agreement. Drafting. The basic professional premise is that mediators work for resolution, be it partial or comprehensive consensus, and the lawyer is tasked with agreement. Please refer to the best practices appendix on specific drafting considerations. At this point, however, I would point out that usually the mediator will convene a focused discussion on this important and any other relevant procedural point within the mediation process further to his or her process management and guardian mandates. Each file calls out for a, the case manager function or persona. In mixed mode ADR, this is often referred to as the guiding mediator or process manager charged with establishing practical process guidelines with strategic awareness. Given the industry evolution of CDR in online mediation, there is a consensus building opportunity highlighted by interim and final progress reports by the mediator to assist the mediation participants in gathering necessary and relevant information with available legal information, not advice, for further consideration by legal or other team members. Any such reports must be framed or mandated as an application of the agreement to mediate as closed mediation not third-party reports for external purposes that can assist but not supplant the lawyers getting up to speed and in particular can highlight material dynamics or presenting features of the law model going back to that point of the negotiated variation, crucial in multidisciplinary risk management. In conclusion, I've stressed assessment and process management being the hallmarks of better service delivery with our language and specific workups being based upon issue resolution. By then honing efficiencies, we can improve service and continue to expand our demonstrated success towards better outcomes for families in our communities. We at the OAFM are interested to hear about your progress and challenges in CDR, particularly as we may collaborate on the development of the process or case manager in private practice and our courts. Increased effectiveness and demonstrated efficiencies are the key to our generational evolution from alternative dispute resolution as outsiders to the inside track of appropriate dispute resolution.